Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're breaking down the full anatomy of the back in a way that you may have never seen before. We're gonna be using visuals from Muscle in Motion to make the function of each muscle crystal clear. We'll cover the superficial muscles like the lats and the traps, but then we'll also peel back the layers to understand the deeper stabilizers like the multifidus and the shoulder rotators. And we'll show you exactly how this knowledge impacts coaching, cueing, assessment, and exercise selection. So by the end of the video, you won't just know the names of each back muscle, but you'll actually understand how each muscle moves, stabilizes, and functions. Thank you to Muscle in Motion for the graphics for this video. And if you wanna go even deeper, make sure you join the wait list for our full anatomy and biomechanics course that we built in collaboration with Muscle in Motion. It's designed for trainers who want to master the why behind every movement that they give their clients in the gym. I'll leave a link below the like button. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the outermost layer, the big movers. These are muscles that you've probably heard of, but may not know every function of. So let's start with the latissimus dorsi. The lats originate from the thoracolumbar fascia, iliac crest, and lower ribs, and they insert onto the humerus. This creates a really wide fan-shaped muscle that covers a lot of the back. The lats perform three different movements, shoulder extension, shoulder adduction, and shoulder internal rotation. That means they play a massive role in pulling-based exercises like rows and pull-ups. I have one really important coaching tip for the lats to share. I think a lot of lifters understand how to contract the lats really well. And this is great. You can use a single arm row, for example, to get a really good feel for fully activating the lats. But it's just as important to know how to fully extend the lats. A simple lat extensibility test involves placing the back against the wall and reaching the thumbs up to the ceiling. It's important to do this without arching the lower back. If you can't reach the thumbs all the way to the wall, then make sure that some of your lat training involves holding a long stretch, for example, by incorporating dead hangs. This will help make sure that you have access to this full shoulder extension and you can fully lengthen the lat. Okay, next is the serratus anterior. The serratus anterior originates from the upper eight or nine ribs and inserts along the medial border of the scapula. So although you can see this muscle from the front, it's deep in the back underneath the scapula. Its primary function is to protract the scapula and assist in upward rotation which is essential for overhead movements like pressing and snatches. When functioning properly, the serratus anterior keeps the scapula flush against the rib cage. This prevents winging and supports clean overhead pressing mechanics. But weakness or poor activation of the serratus anterior is one of the most common reasons that athletes struggle with shoulder stability and range of motion. Understanding the anatomy here really changes how you coach and cue and program. When someone lacks scapular upward rotation, you know to target the serratus anterior and the lower traps, which we'll cover next. You'll also know to cue both protraction and upward rotation of the shoulder blade, and you'll look for that inferior border of the scapula to trace around without winging out. Drills like a wall slide can help this, as well as just basic overhead pressing with appropriate cueing and technique. Okay, now let's cover the trapezius. And this muscle is divided into three sections, the upper, the middle, and the lower. The upper trap produces scapular elevation and upward rotation. The middle trap provides scapular retraction. And then finally, the lower trap provides scapular depression and also assists with upward rotation. Scapular upward rotation is a little bit confusing at first, but when you look at the orientation of the muscle fibers of the upper trap, the lower trap, and the serratus, it should make sense how these work together. And this is a good reminder of how having a strong functional shoulder requires control and timing between multiple muscle groups. I like to train the lower trap raise specifically because it doesn't get targeted with most big movements like pull downs, rows, or deadlifts. You can train that lower trap raise by lifting the arm forward, but then also out to the side at about a 30 degree angle. Essentially, you want the arm in line with those fibers of the lower trap. And whenever you're looking at someone doing this, you wanna make sure that that inferior border of the scapula is moving down and then toward the midline. All right, next we have the rhomboids. These are deep to the traps and they retract and downwardly rotate the scapula. They're key for posture and row movements. These are well targeted with most row variations, particularly those with horizontal pulling movements like a seated cable row or a chest supported row. Now, if we peel back the traps, we can reveal the next layer of back anatomy, the muscles that stabilize the scapula and the thoracic spine. The levator scapulae, for example, elevates the scapula 
and assists with downward rotation. And this one does seem to be overactive in a lot of people with neck tension. I like to use a pin and stretch technique here, finding the superior medial border of the scapula, providing pressure, and then allowing a client to gently tilt their head side to side in the frontal plane. You can actually use this in combination with some neck isometric movements or manually resisted movements like lateral flexion to improve neck strength and mobility. Next, the erector spinae group consists of three different muscles, the iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. These long muscles run vertically along the spine and extend the back. They are key players in deadlifts, spinal extension exercises like the 45 degree back hyperextension, and anything else that involves extending at the spine. When you're doing a 45 degree back extension, using an extended spine throughout the movement will utilize more of the spinal erectors. But if by contrast, you maintain a flexed spine and then you utilize more hip extension, that will target the glutes more. Another deep stabilizer of the back is the multifidus. It attaches vertebrae to vertebrae and provides segmental stability, especially in the lumbar spine. This actually could be underactive in individuals with low back pain in certain cases. In the case of acute low back pain, low level stability exercises like bird dogs can target this muscle. And there are a few other muscles in the deep back as well. The rotators are smaller than the multifidus, but contribute to spinal rotation and proprioception as well. And the inner spinalis and inner transversari are tiny muscles that provide fine tuned adjustments between vertebrae. These are relevant during a movement assessment, for example, seeing if a client can control their spinal position and also maintain proper core control during, for example, a squat. If these qualities of spinal control are lacking or if pain is present, it can be a good indication that the client could benefit from regressing movements and targeting some of these deeper stabilizing muscles. All right, there we have it, all the layers of the core muscles. Overall, I hope seeing the layers of the back muscles helps you when you're writing a program because now you'll understand how to balance global stabilizing movements with like the lats with local stabilizers like the deep stabilizers of the back. If you wanna learn even more about anatomy and biomechanics, including assessments, visuals, exercise breakdowns, and more, make sure you join the waitlist for our anatomy and biomechanics course in the description below. And it's also the best way to get the launch price discount when it's released. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.